Hi everyone. So <clears throat> in this video, uh, we are going to install the reporting services because in the previous video, I have configured the uh, reporting service template or extension in the VL Studio. And like you can see, we are now able to create the reports. Uh, but in order to do that, we first need to configure the reporting services in the SQL Server. Now with the reporting service, like, you know, if you want to build any report, SQL Server provide the, the built-in uh, service called reporting service that allow you to build operational as well as the analytical report, but obviously like Microsoft released the Power BI. So Power BI is gaining more momentum and popularity compared to SQL Server reporting services, but SQL Server reporting services still has its own, uh, uh, I would say, uh, significance in, in building the operational report. And it's a very, very powerful uh, tool in terms of once you start, you know, understanding and start building the reports. And especially if you have the, uh, the small to medium enterprise prizes where you cannot uh, afford you know really uh, a sophisticated tool uh, like the the business object uh, reporting service really come in handy and help you to to build uh, some nice uh, operational report for your business right so in order to do it first we need to install the reporting services and in this uh, video i'm going to show you step by step process so the very first thing because we have already installed the sql server on our machine uh, so what we can do we can go uh, in the folder and you can see in the SQL Server 2022, I have the installation center, which uh, contain all the, the, the uh, additional component that I can install and even I can uh, modify the, the existing component using that uh, wizard, right? So once I launch it, it's gonna actually bring that screen in front of me and you can see it has a couple of uh, tabs, including planning, installation, maintenance tool, uh, uh, resources, advanced and options. So in this, video we are only concerned because we are uh, about installation because we are going to install the the new capability which is the reporting services so let me hit reporting services and you're going to see it will uh, take us to the Microsoft uh, website where I can download the reporting services and you can see it has already uh, downloaded the uh, oh, for somehow it's download real studio setup i'm not sure why but anyway i can see reporting services uh and if you know till 20 i think 16 the reporting service part of the sql server visit and after 2016 for somehow microsoft uh, i think from 17 microsoft took it out from from the actual sql server installation stack and now you have to install it separately uh, uh and you need to download it right so let's see if i can find it out where we have the uh these are all the configure your report server all right so i think that that's something which has is downloaded let me see what it has downloaded the studio setup all right so it's a little bit different let me see if i can what it is saying that's not with i'm looking at the moment All right, so what we need to do, we need to find this exe. I believe that it has already been downloaded on my machine. Uh, let me sort it out where the uh, the reporting service, oh, there we go. Download SQL Server report from the Microsoft Download Center. So let me just go in there. So I'm gonna put that link. So the, the link was uh, hidden for somehow. Uh, let's download the reporting services. Now that that's the one which I was actually looking initially. So fortunately, we find it quickly. Let it in, uh, download it on my machine, and then we'll go uh, with the installation. Uh, one more thing, I'm gonna put that link in the in the description so you guys can uh, use it if you want to. Let me just save that link. I don't want to keep the browser open. It's just gonna take the the resources for no reason. So as soon as it has been downloaded, but I think uh, let's keep it open because I can see the MDS has already been open and MDS is uh, master data services. 
So let's go to the download uh, folder. Now we have the reporting services. So that, that's something I was actually looking uh, uh, previously. So we have already downloaded uh, SQL Server reporting service for 2022. Make sure you have a right version because I tell you the truth. Uh, previously, we have the similar version because it has installed as part of the, the SQL Server, right? But now Microsoft uh, has separated it out. I haven't found the reason. Maybe the licensing uh, has some, some changes, but uh, at the end of the day, if you want to use the reporting services, you have to install it separately, which is pretty straightforward. Tell you the truth, it's not gonna uh, take much uh, uh, time. Uh, let it come in. Let me just close uh, my Visual Studio. Yeah, so I can see. Yeah, install reporting services. Yeah, choose a free edition expired, or I'm going to use the developer. And like I mentioned, uh, that with the developer, you can build everything. Uh, it has all the features available, but make sure you are not going to use any production uh, or business related stuff with, with the developer edition, right? It is not included in the developer terms and condition. Make sure once you use the developer edition, please do not use it for any kind of production load. Microsoft is going to find it and you're going to be in trouble. Uh, and on even on moral ground, uh, it's, a, it's a big, I would say, uh, 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 sport and kindness for Microsoft that they allow the, uh, this version with all features to be available for us to play and to, to learn and to build stuff that can later on productionize once we purchase the license, right? So keep that in mind by saying it, let's uh, move on. Yeah, I'm happy to accept the licensing. Yeah, and it is our database to store the reporting, which I've already done. So you can see it's asking you need the database engine to be installed. And like I mentioned previously, that this is actually part of the uh, the SQL Server installation previously. But now, because we already configured the, the SQL Server database, so we don't need to worry about, I uh, guess I have already uh, downloaded, uh, installed the database. So I'm come. Uh, comfortable. Yeah, I'm only going to install the reporting services at this stage. Yeah, that's going to be my folder. If you want to uh, install in a different drive than your Windows, which is normally the best uh, practice, just to make sure that you put the right uh, folder path or location uh, uh, in, in here. And once you select the, the folder, let it install. You can see it's pretty quick, the installation. It's going smooth. Hopefully it will finish in a couple of seconds. Let me come back once it finished the installation. All right, guys, so the Installation has been completed. Uh, we can now the once we installed it, the the work hasn't been finished. We just installed the application. There is uh, uh, activities required to configure the reporting services once it has been installed successfully. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna uh, select configure manually and customize setting, and let's close it. Hopefully, it will open the. Yeah, let me just save it. So just trying to somehow my web studio is not responding. Uh, Yeah, I think that's pretty smooth. Let me see. Okay, yeah. So it didn't bring the it didn't bring the configuration wizard automatically. Let me just close the the Visual Studio. Let's see. Yeah, now I can. There was a small uh delay in the in the response. So I think we are all good. 
Yeah. So once you install the reporting services, you're going to see that there is a, uh, an option available called reporting report server configuration manager. In order to use the reporting services, we first need to configure uh, the reporting server on, on our machine, right? Keep in mind, generally we install it as part of the, the, the database server box, but if you are keeping it on a separate box, depend upon the architecture you are building, the, 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 uh, the topology that you are using, because SQL server contain multiple services in inside the stack but uh, and generally in the production load we look at the load on the server and then we segregate the services right so make sure you have the uh, the right configuration because i'm using in the in the dev environment so for me everything is on a single machine but generally once we go in the production we have a separate uh boxes depend upon the 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 expected work uh load or i would say the the uh, the stress on the server right so let's see, uh, let me run the reporting service uh, uh, configuration manager. It will allow us to, to configure the, the reporting service uh, on our machine. Uh, by the way, you can see it automatically detect the server, uh, the database for us, and uh, we are going to use, yeah, we are going to use SSRS, report server instant. That's the default one. Let's hit connect. So now we can see our SSRS service is running. Uh, and if you want to see that service, if we go to the services, let me show you the, the services in, in, in here as well. Let's press SQL Server and you're going to see there is a reporting services, right? So you can see it is running now. So that means the reporting services has been installed successfully. Generally, we have a, instead of, you know, the the uh, the network login or the uh, net service login, we generally have our dedicated login, which has a limited permission on, on uh, for, for this service, right? And through that permission, we control the access on our network because if that account has been compromised, uh, we can reduce the blast radius, right? So that that's something a best practice for 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 configuring the uh, the the accounts which are running behind these services but anyway because we are in the dev, uh, environment so i'm not going to bother much about it I, yeah i'm going to use virtual server account but if we have another account like i mentioned previously if we are using domain account which has a limited permission we're going to specify that account in here and that account will use uh behind the service uh, uh account uh, service uh, reporting service and uh, with reporting services, uh, I'm not sure whether you know, we have the web interface where you can see your report and all the uh, SQL Server reporting services are web-based reports, uh, which really allow different users to interact using the URL. And it's, it's a really powerful tool, especially from the operation report perspective. And you know, if we need to configure the reporting services, uh, web interface, we need to configure internet information services. We are fortunate because we have installed master data services previously. So we already have our uh, 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 internet information services configured. So I don't need to worry about the IS, which is the abbreviation of internet information services. All I need to go back and yeah, I'm good. I'm just going to change the port because it's not going to be 80 because I'm already using AT with my master data services. So you can see because I'm not providing any uh, port in here. So by default, what it is doing, it is uh, uh, listening on the uh, port 80. But if we want to use port 80 on the reporting services, we can use the report 80 on reporting service and then we can use a different port in, in here, right? So it really depends upon the, the architecture that you like to, to, to build while you are installing the, the SQL Server in, in your environment. All right, so what I'm gonna do, so instead of uh, 80, let's use 4,000. Right, so HTTP certificate, I'm not going to use it because I don't have it, but if you have, you can use the HTTP certif HTTPS certificate if you want to use HTTPS uh, URLs, right? So I think, let me just hit apply. And hopefully that port will be accepted. Yeah, you can see the result now behind the scene, it is configuring and we have the uh, the URL, which is going to show us their report server. So report server is the engine that actually control the whole mechanics of the reporting uh, 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 service. 
And let's see what is going to come back. I believe it's going to give us a, a small error uh, because we haven't finished the configuration. So let's uh, continue with the configuration and we'll get back once the, it has been loaded. The next step, we're going to uh, configure the database like we have seen initially. Reporting service need a database where it can store all this configuration, report reference, share data set, uh, data sources. If you don't know about all these terms, don't worry. I'm going to explain in the upcoming video once we interact with this component. But at this stage, we need to, in simple uh, word, we need to set up a database for our reporting services so it can store all the configuration in that database, right? So what I'm going to do right now, you can see SQL Server name database name report server mod they are all blank so the first thing we're going to do click on the change database you have the option you can use the existing reporting server database if you have already uh, 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 installed or created on one of this uh, database server you can reference to that database or you can use a new instance right because a fresh installation i'm going to go with the new installation let me hit next yeah i'm going to use the integrated security otherwise i can use the other options you could server account as well which obviously allow us to interact with the uh with the database using uh, the the uh, the uh, rights or permission of this account right so let me just hit test connection because my user has all the permissions so everything looks good hit next and yeah language and reporting server mode is native you can see it has been selected by default uh, we have a temp database because uh, reporting service need two database. One is the reporting server database. The other one is uh, the, the report server temp database. And by the way, if I just quickly go behind this uh, web page, which is now showing me the reporting service error. And don't worry about this error because we hit the URL without finishing the configuration, right? So it's uh, obviously it's looking for the additional uh, information from the database, which is not able to find uh, find out. That's why it's giving us the error. Once we finish the configuration, uh, we uh, come back to this URL refresh and it should uh, 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 start working for us. Uh, okay, next, click next. Yeah, service credential. We're going to use the 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 uh, uh, built-in account that has already been configured with, with our uh, service uh, that we have seen in, in, in here. And that has been uh, uh, configured as part of the installation. But like I mentioned, we can change it depends upon the security requirement. Hit next, yeah, we are all good. The summary looks good. We can change the, uh, uh, the account or username if we want to, but currently my uh, server is not connected to the, to the domain. So that's why I'm gonna use the default. Hit next, and now it's installing. And hopefully it won't take much time for it to configure the, the database. And while it's doing it, let me quickly come back in, in here and I'll show you, we're gonna have two more databases report server and report server temp db like i mentioned for the master data service make sure you are not going to to uh, mess with with these two databases because both are uh, used by the reporting services and by the way you can if you want you can obviously learn it but don't try to change anything uh, uh, in these databases that's obviously going to impact on on the on the uh, reporting service or the reports you will create right so the bar is all right. We are the all the uh, option has a success result. So everything looks good. So let me just hit finish. Now you can see we have now uh, previously we have these fields blank, but now we can see the values in here and we can see the account has been configured. But if you want, later you want to change the the uh, uh, security information, you just hit the change credential and it's gonna actually allow you to change the account from, from here, right? Just especially once you are promoting it to, to the staging environment or the production environment, you can do that. All right, so uh, I think we are good in in uh, in this uh, tab. Let's move on to the next one. And by the way, before I uh, uh, configure the web portal URL, let me just show you in the email setting, we uh, set up the email information and it will help us to, to uh, automate the report sharing through email. So that there's another very powerful feature, you know, instead of user is asking you to, to, uh, uh, to get the report or even user 
that is coming uh, every morning and run the report, we have the capability in the SQL Server reporting services that it send the reports on a due schedule to the user automatically. And uh, on that morning, when they're gonna come in, there is a report in their inbox and uh, with the message that reminds them to take action. So it has a lot of use cases and it really helped to, to, you know, to improve user productivity because most of the time if people forgot something, they, they are not gonna uh, take action and things got delayed. But with this option, we can automate the report generation and sending them as an attachment with the email and the business user can action upon that. So it's the, you can imagine the, there's a full automation uh, in, the, in the process. And execution account, if you want to uh, share uh, the, the uh, uh, if we want to share the resources uh, with, with our reporting server, uh, we need a, an account which should have access to the external resources. Uh, we are not going to use this much because we are not going to interact with the external stuff. But if we need, we, I can show you a quick demo. Encryption key, if we are, uh, 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 I think, uh, if we are encrypting our contents, we can, uh, I think generally the report server uh, already have the encryption uh, set it up. So we can take the, the the backup of this case. It normally use once we move our reporting load from one server to another. So in order to do that, we need to create the, uh, we need to restore through the key and that key we need it uh, as because everything in the reporting database is encrypted. And subscription setting, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, let's leave it for, for the next video. I don't want to actually uh, create so much and scale out deployment if we want to, to add more server uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the reporting uh, form. If we see that our server is uh, overloaded, we can add more server, which is obviously the scale out instead of scale up. We can obviously increase the resources on the server as well. But if we want to put the multiple servers behind the the uh, uh, the cluster uh, and we want to convert it into a cluster uh, format where we have the load balancer actually split the load between multiple server, we can use that. But it's a highly advanced option and obviously we need the uh, assistance from our networking team. So these, that's a very high level overview for these uh, options. We're going to use some of these options in, in upcoming videos, but uh, in the uh, generally, uh, 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 it depends that what's your uh, load sizes and based on that and what's the the reporting requirements are and then based on that you uh, you use these uh, these options uh, but the the actual option that we need to configure as part of this configuration exercise is the which is the last but not the least uh, configure the reporting uh, 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 interface uh, URL, because without that, you cannot work with the reporting services. And you can see all it's gonna do, it's gonna actually create the web uh, website, or I would say the web portal virtual directory in the uh, IIS, Internet Information Services, which we have already installed. And by the way, let me just show you. Information Services. That's the role is the it allow us to host the website on our server and we already hosted a website uh, for our MDS and you can see it's in here. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to host another website which is going to actually help me to interact with the reporting services through the web interface. So in order to do it, let me just click default website and the default you can see and that's why I'm saying it is listening on M uh, port 80 because it's under the default website and we have the MDS right. So everything has been set it up by the installer i'm not going to change it but now what i'm going to do i'm going to now create my reports uh, virtual directory which will allow me to to interact with the reporting services through web interface uh, and uh, you can change the name of this if you want to. I'll keep it uh, 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 same or default, uh, but if you want, you can change the, the URL. Let me just hit apply. That's it, because we have already configured the database. The service is already running. We just need to put on top of that the, the web interface so we can interact with the reporting service through that interface. And now you can see it just uh, run 
the internal operation, which where it create the directory, it can configure the access with the database, and you can see it's listening on on the four thousand, and it automatically detected that we're gonna list uh, uh, access the report at four thousand. So you, uh, I haven't actually provided that that port information, but because I have configured the the web report server URL, so it already uh, went back and it read the configuration from report server. It identified identify the configuration from there. It interact with the database and now we are able to uh, uh, open our uh, uh, report, uh, SQL Server reporting interface uh, the URL. Let me hit that. And I believe it's gonna move us to the, to the reporting server uh, UI. Which is quite nice uh, compared to the to the previous version. Uh, I have seen uh, even I think from two thousand twelve all the way uh, two thousand twenty two. So you can see Microsoft have improved the 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 interface a lot, and it's really help you to 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 you know to build some now professional styles reports uh, which allow you to 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 uh, provide the operational reporting or transactional reporting capabilities uh, to to the business right coming uh, uh it's gonna come as part of the the upcoming videos uh, topic but at this stage you can see the uh, we are able to see the nice reporting interface uh in front of us one thing is pending uh which i haven't actually done it which is reporting service error uh because like i mentioned we have hit that url without finish the configuration but now if i go and i press f5 you're gonna see that error will be gone because now the whole reporting services has been configured properly so give it a couple of seconds hopefully it will turn quickly but uh if while we are waiting for it to be loaded, so that that's the whole end-to-end -end process to to uh, to configure the reporting services on SQL Server 2022. Uh, I believe uh, it's going to really help you as well to to use that service, especially for building the the reports. And by the way, I'm saying it uh, from the operational reporting perspective because in the next video we're going to use install the Power BI as well, which allow us to to build the uh, the analytic reports and many other capabilities which are related to the analytics. So that's why I'm keeping the reporting services purely for the transactional report. But don't get me wrong, if you want to build the, the analytical reports, the uh, reporting services provide you these capability as well, right? But obviously this is not as user-friendly as the Power BI, right? That's why Microsoft has two different tools for, for two different uh, 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 work types. Now let me come back in here and uh, guess what? We can see our reporting engine is now running without any error, which is really good. Like we can see there is no error. The error has gone because we have successfully configured and install and configure the reporting services. So feel free to, to put any comments or question if you have more than happy to answer. Otherwise, hopefully you like this video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Th thank you for watching and stay tuned.